This conference will now be recorded. All right. Uh, so this is one of the frequently asked question. What is the use of dynamic class referencing? So how do you implement dynamic class referencing? Okay. And in general, we need to incorporate it in our applications as well. So for the reusability perspective, and whenever we have a frameworks and implementations, in general, we will have both the things. Okay. So as in when we are having the framework and in order to reuse the rules created in the framework layer, and if we have a dynamic class referencing concept implemented, in such scenario, we doesn't need to redo again in the implementation layer. So how do we do the dynamic class referencing and what are the rules involved in the dynamic class referencing? We need to remember and we need to while answering the question. Okay, so let's go to the demonstration. So first of all, we need to have a framework and implementation, both of them. Okay, only then we are eligible to have this implemented. So let's have a framework created first of all. So let's take a theme UI kit and let's say a recruiter framework layer. So let's go to advanced configuration and keep the application structure as framework. And my application is recruiter. Save this. Create application. All right. So first of all, I have to I need to have a framework application created. Okay. And now I will create a case type. The framework layer, I'm going to have a case type created. Let's take a case type, recruitment management okay so there is a recruiter employee case type I'm going to have it okay and I'm going to have a sub case as well called onboarding Okay, so this is another case type, which is a child case for the recruitment, recruit employee. All right, so let's take this recruit employee case and create a sub case. Okay, and add a step called create child case going to the automations okay so here we have to select the case type okay and in general without having any knowledge on the dcr straightforward you may select this case type okay so you may select the onboarding case type over here all right or you will specify the class name over here the class which case type that belongs to so that class you are going to specify over here okay so what is the benefit that you will get by implementing dcr is you doesn't need to save this particular flow into the implementation layer if in case you are doing that class in a uh, dynamically pass the class okay so you need to pass the dynamically the classes which has to be referred over here so that is something we call it as a dynamic class referencing okay so wherever you have the classes hard coded we doesn't hard code it we will try to pass them dynamically okay so how to incorporate it i'm going to show you now so first of all save it so first of all in order to implement the dynamic class referencing we just need to have a data page okay and this data page is for the app extension. So when we are going to have a DNS score app extension data page created, and let's have a data type created. 
for all the extension parameters which are hard coded parameters so all the hard coded parameters will try to save it by referencing the data types in this okay so let's take a class name as onboarding class name okay so this is a property which captures the hard coded class name similarly you may have recruit the class name okay so similar way we can define all the fields that has hard coded values okay and now you go to this data page specify the class of this app extension while creating this data page create this and now let's take a data transform as a source and specify all the default parameters so you can specify py default create this so save this in our class create it so you need to have a source configured for this data page that should be data transform which has all the hard coded parameters which is like recruiter class name okay so all the hard coded parameters that are there okay so similarly you need to define all the parameters like onboarding class name okay so this way we are going to define all the other hard coded parameters as well and now go to your go to the flow save the data page and of course you can keep this in the node level to increase the performance and whenever you define that you need to define the access group if you are defining the node level All right, so now come back to the flow uh, where we are child, creating the child cases. So this is my process. Let's go to the process, open the process. So before that, let's refresh it. Okay, so I'm going to have a child case added to this. So this is a general process. Now, updating the DCR to this flow, open the process, and now go to the data phase and classes where you are using the D underscore app extension page. Okay, and specify the app extension class okay so specify the class name and now you are eligible to update the classes with appropriate fields over here okay so instead of specifying the straightforward class straightforward the case type selected i will specify the class name by specifying the dcr 
okay so dn square app extension dot onboarding class name so this way if you specify it so it is going to take the class from the data page source which is given here okay so whatever the py default is there so this is the one which it picks it up okay so this class it will pick it up all right so now you can see the difference okay so now let's create a case new recruit employee so you can see test description submit so you have a child case created onboarding case so this is launched and click on submit so you see o iphon 1 is created in the class framework class okay so the class is the table which is mapped to this onboarding is a framework specified table so you can see a definition test connection so this is pointed to a table called fw okay so this is having us in a kept in a separate table so the instances that you are looking for it is available here okay now let's switch to the new application Let's create a new application here, which is an implementation layer. So using this recruiter framework, build with recruiter framework case type. So I can use this case type, okay? So, so that it is reused and including the data types as well. And let's take this as recruiter application management. So this is my implementation layer. Already exist. Let's take this as HR application. Okay. Create. So this is my implementation layer. Okay, go to the application. And now that if I, without doing any changes, if I try to create a case in the implementation layer, so you see there is a this is not a covered class so you can see here this is the error that you got it the reason why it is because the recruiter employee has a create case where it is using the d underscore app extension dot onboarding class name which is the framework class and you are trying to save the class from your implementation layer okay and that is not allowed since it is not a covered class okay so if you see the class covered classes so you can see here only the onboarding is there there is no framework specified in this recruit emp case type okay but whereas you are trying to create a child case that belongs to framework okay so that is the issue that is the reason it is not allowed to do that so now you are going to have this py default saved into your implementation layer implementation tool set okay so you can specify this hr app rule set so this is you can say specialized by rule set okay so the question may come uh, the rule set specialization so the same name is there in the two different rule sets but the one which is at the top will be picked up okay so here this instance already exists already there is a rule set created for us so py default data transform let's go app extension py default data transform this is then the recruiter i need to do the save as okay 
into my rule set which are application okay so i'm going to have this created in this hr app so you can see earlier the same rule is there in recruiter i'm just copying that rule in this rule set okay so the rule set varies here the class everything remains same only the rule set varies so this is called as rule set specialization so whenever we are keeping the same rule in two different rule sets that is a rule set specialization okay so here we are going to specify only the classes which is specific to the implementation layer okay so we are going to have this class specified okay and similarly for onboarding okay save this and now if i go and create the case So you are going to it is allowing us to create the case and we can go and check the case created in this layer okay so only the implementation specific cases only you can see over here okay so o-1 will go inside the framework because we have created the case in the framework layer and o-2 created in the implementation so you can see the class definition of this it is pointed to a different table whereas the framework is pointed to a different table all right so this way we are reusing the the case life cycle uh, case processes which are created in the framework in the implementation way okay so the concept of dynamic class referencing is dynamically you are referencing the classes without hard codings and specified in our uh, framework rules we can reuse them in our implementation straightforward all right 